TradeTheNBI.com. This is John's report. It's for the 2nd of March. Well, as expected, we were looking at the NASDAQ. Uh, if it uh, started to give way at all, it was going to lead us right back down uh, from an S&P standpoint. So here on the ES, down to the 38%. Did exactly that. We weren't expecting supports to hold in this, given what we were seeing from uh, the lead of the white MBI. Uh, exceedingly low shakeout. We're really, I mean, uh, DOC here. We're at a point on the uh, DOC where we might see some bounce back um, coming through simply because uh, when you get to the negative uh, 20 space, so in this particular case, 21, we're pretty close. About 23, it's sort of uh, assured that you get some type. And we may see that 38.95 before. That would be the open from the beginning of the year, just in case you were wondering what that one was, because we talked about that a little while ago, uh, just as a reference point, just to let you know where things are proceeding or not proceeding from, and that we're currently below the uh, 38%, uh, I would expect that that's going to be a lift back point. We can already see a little bit of softening here from uh, the short standpoint. Uh, some will take that opportunity to cover below that, but you don't have a whole lot of uh, great things happening here, just barely above magenta over yellow here on the uh, MBI reading at uh, 45 to 20. And we can look at the NASDAQ should be at the 50%. Yep. It is now. Uh, came down close to it, fought back just a little bit, but uh, as we opened today, it, it caved a little bit further to that. And that was exactly what we were expecting on uh, any continued weakness. You had the uh, magenta rising, might have been enough to hold things off. Um, it wasn't really anything dramatic. It was just pretty soft going as far as that goes. It's just you lost your midterm buyers. And once those started to fade off a little bit, it just wasn't enough to uh, keep things up. Uh, shorts had added into this setup here right up at the 61% uh, line and just kept piling into it. And there just wasn't enough uh, support. It was only just short-term buyers was the only thing that keeping things from starting to fall apart. And once they got tired, that was it. Bonds doing exactly uh, as expected here. TLT uh, for Treasury uh, representation uh, dipping back down towards the 100. We expected it to move towards that 0% line. And again, that is uh, the reality of the Fed is not going to stop anytime soon raising rates. And as long as deficits continue to rise and you get this spiral effect of that spurs inflation because they're just throwing more and more money at and it's just a vicious cycle it isn't going to end and some commodities aren't going to take that lying down and i think oil is one of them uh some of these elevated uh price situations aren't going to necessarily be about price uh i mean about supply and demand as far as setting price but also recognizing uh, the devaluation of purchasing power and uh, will rise and or stay higher simply because of that and they become a new norm which uh, that would be uh, tragic, but I mean, everything else has gone up. And so it's relative to uh, just the reduction of what you can buy with the same dollars. And I su suspected that that would be the liftoff uh, point for uh, gold to start taking a move back up. And uh, it's going to take a little bit more effort than just a single dip. Uh, it's going to probably have to work its way around a little bit before starting to make another run. Of course, that is a concern because they don't like to see gold going because everyone then thinks that uh, people are fleeing. But the demand for gold uh, from other central banks and everything is pretty robust. Uh, Euro took a giant jump on that only to give back, uh, well, half of it now. And that's just a joke. It's just uh, you can play with the short term manipulations. We see that happen uh, with the Fed. And then you hope it catches fire like it did for this breakout move that came from subpar uh, coming back up to where we were uh, towards the 110, but still way out of proportion to what's happening in the Eurozone relative to uh, at least America's doing far better. Uh, depending on which sectors and areas you're looking at. And that's just the variation. Bitcoin staying above that 76% uh, right layer on that line and uh, could be a crossover point here where uh, a little bit of short activity is starting to spike on that setup. And here we have ETH doing identical to that. And from a 50K standpoint, you can see the breakdown started to take place. It had a decent pop, but as soon as that MBI Magenta, and I talk about this a lot, pivots below 25. That's usually a pretty ugly sign. It's a fulfillment of the spike of MBI white leading back to the zero. And 
pretty clean from there. Uh, from a 50K standpoint, we started the morning with a nice pump under positive extremes for most of that. That filled it right back in here just uh, before the market opened. Then it was just a little seesaw battle with uh, some various plays. We're putting these on the uh, Skype chat, our expectation over here when we were looking again at the spike of white uh, coming up that uh, we would probably reface uh, 0%. We had a little deviation to the upside on it, but it did exactly that, fit right in between previous algo levels and then back and forth spikes. And these were all pretty clean until we got towards the end of the day. Um, as we started to make some of the lower lows, we weren't quite getting to the algo levels. It would spike back up, start it back over, and now we've filled them in here. If we just slide over, if I can get a grab, there we go into the pre-market. It's already pretty healthy uh, from an action standpoint, and it's been straight to the downside. So paint bar wise, it's very clean. Um, so I think that uh, the market's behaving quite orderly, so there's no real dramatic. Yes, there's a lot of headwinds. There's a lot of uh, variations to play with, but uh, we're, we're seeing a lot more consistent movement. And to me, it's, it's more algo driven than it is any kind of retail involvement or jumping in and out. Uh, these are large funds just having to move things around. And um, that takes broader ranges because the way they try to average price. And so that's why we get these moves, come to our algo levels slightly below, move back to them, see if that creates a new balance point. If not, then move to the next one. And that's where we broke below the uh, 3938 right there. And we're pushing right back up to it uh, pretty equally. So all exciting stuff. So I think it's all good. As always, though, uh, continue to look for me on Skype chat. Trade well. We'll talk to you later.